Israeli Finance Minister Yuval Steinitz says that in Israel it feels like the global recession has ended, but he does see danger on the horizon. Steinitz worries that increasing Israel's interest rates without an equivalent move here in the U.S. could hurt Israeli exports by strengthening the shekel. From his perspective, there is a global currency war underway. I think that this is not new, that it is going on almost two years now, uh, this, this policy. Uh, since we saw, at least at the beginning, sharp decline in global trade, uh, most countries were trying uh, to weaken their, their currencies in order to support their uh, exports, uh, in order not to increase their unemployment. And also, of course, the conflict between the two giants, between the United States and China mm -hmm. over the currencies. We are also uh, being uh, influenced by it, so it's not just Brazil or Israel or Switzerland, it's also Britain and Sweden and Poland and many other countries that were trying to weaken their local currency. When it comes to interest rates, you also have been vocal in saying that you are questioning what's going to happen to Israel if you look at the U.S. and there's a zero to a quarter percent interest rate and Israel is raising, therefore widening the spread there. Yeah, the is it at the point of risk now? The spread is, is, the spread is problematic. We, can all, we cannot open too large gap between interest rates in Israel and the rest of the Western world, exactly because of the currency problem. So on the one hand, uh, if you look from Israeli perspective, it seems like we are over the crisis because uh, economic growth is very strong again, unemployment is down, and the prospect uh, uh, for the future of the Israeli economy is pretty good. And now we took many measures uh, you know, we made uh, dramatic cuts in our uh, security budgets for the next two years' budget, 2011, 2012. You just mentioned security spending and, and looking at your budget separately. Um, one of the things that's being reported in today's press following those uh, comments by Prime Minister Netanyahu that he and the United States are speaking about how to keep the peace process going, uh, there was the, the question of incentives, one of them being upping uh, the amount being offered in security spending beyond the $3 billion existing level. What is it on the financial incentive front that is attractive at this point in any kind of package like that? Uh, I don't want to go into details. I mm -hmm. think that the main issue is to promote the peace talks. The issue of the settlement is not to the well, issue. You're a part of the prime minister's cabinet here. You're part of that decision-making process and conversation. So do you think that the prime minister can get a majority of the cabinet to agree to extend the moratorium? I don't know. It, de it depends about the, about the deal, about the agreement. It is not easy for him because, don't forget, it was a unilateral, I, I emphasize, unilateral gesture by Israel. Uh, Secretary Clinton said that it was unprecedented step mm -hmm. by the Israeli Prime Minister. You not, wouldn't support? I didn't say extent. so. It depends. It depends what exactly will uh, be uh, brought to the cabinet to decide upon. I am just emphasizing. In terms of incentives from the United States? In terms or? of incentives, in, in terms also of the Palestinian attitude. Look, until now, we made three unilateral gestures. One was Netanyahu's declaration that he is ready to see the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. The second was an economic peace. Uh, with our help, the Palestinian economy is boosting mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, standard of living is, is improving in the West Bank among Palestinians. And the third was 10 months unilateral uh, a moratorium on building uh, new constructions and settlements. After three such gestures, one should expect the other side uh, to make some, uh, some, uh, some gestures, some, to show some reciprocity.